Hello everyone, what you're currently seeing on screen is a thing of beauty. Ever since Void 3.0 came out, I wanted to test out some of the current exotic in game and see which ones work the best with the subclass. And I noticed that the Runa's effigy has been left in the shadow for quite a while. This build has some crazy synergy going on with the Hunter subclass, as not only can you go invisible per avoid attack done, but you'll be able to suppress anyone caught within a blast, turn them volatile, and create tons of wells to feed back into your abilities as you please. If you thought Void Hunters were broken, then wait until you see this. But you know what else isn't broken? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then do leave a like, a sub, and turn on your notifications for more content like this in the future. I would really appreciate it. So let's start with subclass, which will be Mobius Quiver, as I will provide the best amount of damage being used via super. The main part we need to focus on is the aspects and fragments of course. So for example, a stylus executioner grants us invisibility as long as we proc a number of debuffs it lists, which for us will be volatile. From here, your melee attacks while invisible will weaken targets which can come in handy against mini bosses. We then have a vanishing step ability which allows you to go invisible via dodging. Nice and simple, don't think I need to go any more in depth from there. Though trappers can also be used, ideally we want to have a free and easy to use dodge ability on standby, in case things do go bad. Now for fragments you then want to have Echo Remnants that increases the duration for grenades, Echo for Undermining which allows your grenades to provide a weakened effect, Echo Reprisal which allows us to gain more super energy while surrounded, and Echo of Instability where defeating targets with grenades grant volatile rounds to avoid weapons. The plan here is to enhance Rune's effigy ball effect, which act as the main source of power for the build, but also grant us safety while doing so. Very simple to do and does not require a lot of thinking, which is great as a start build for Hunter who has just joined the game. The setup will clear Rune's of combatants with ease and then allow us to safely sneak past anyone alive just to repeat it all over again. It's great. Now of course, you also want the right stats and mods to support the setup. We have 80 in mobility and the rest of the stats following through with 50 to 60 ranges. As to be totally honest with you, the build will mainly focus on the weapon used rather than the stats itself. Still, I recommend you pump some points into discipline as I can see that being a key stat as well. For mods, we have bountiful wells for getting two wells instead of one, elemental armaments that will allow us to create wells via our weapons, volatile flow which will allow us to make our void weapons volatile via wells collected, Powerful Friends for the plus 20 in mobility and Reaping Wellmaker mod for creating even more wells the moment we dodge. Everything here is designed for supporting your abilities so you can get them back quickly and weaken others, while also severely enhancing your exotic weapon in use. This in practice can make taking on even the toughest content it breathes if you stay invisible all the time, which in our case will always be the case. Now weapons you want for this should complement the style of play being done. As you'll be invisible all the time, it only makes sense to have the Ragnar Deep shotgun with Substitutes and Demolitionists. Ideally, as you're invisible and close range, you can use it to take out any heavy or powerful combatants nearby you that you weren't able to via your secondary. Any perk for the weapon is fine here, but if you get the same role I have, then that would really help you out in the build and the next one after that. Alternatively, any SMG is a good choice to pick, especially the raid SMG, as that can be handy for taking on multiple combatants at once. For secondary, we have the Runa's FG Exotic, which will be the main focus of the build. Every ability of ours will be linked down to the weapon and how we use the Void Orb attack over his period of use. This means us going invisible, getting health back, causing targets to go volatile, and triggering Graviton Forfeit's effects will all be down to the weapon alone. In many ways, because of how simple the setup is, you could in theory change up some of the mods used as you can create some crazy combos with any activity in mind. For Heavy, we have the Red Heron Rocket Launcher with Golden Trigon, and this is a great weapon to get or craft for a void based build you have in mind. As we are using an exotic already, I would have opted into using the Deathbringer instead for its wide AoE void effects. However, Red Herring is also a great choice to use since you have the ability to create your very own god roll that you wish. This is a version I've had available with me from the start, but I ideally will be looking for one that gives me more impact damage over time. For stats, there's not a lot of support going to be focused in and around these areas compared to what we usually do. As you can see, a lot of interactions being made are done the moment we get our void orb available and then attack, and from there we can then trigger things like Stylus Executioner, Graviton Forfeit, and any other void based abilities that can tie into the build. 
Well, we can still focus points into mobility and discipline, as D2 stats will play a big part in the build as well. A mobility at 80, for example, will allow me to use my dodge ability as freely as possible with its fast cooldown and interlink bonuses from using Graft on Forfeit. From here, we can then add on mods such as Powerful Friends for the plus 20 mobility and provide even more space for additional mods of our choosing. The high stat will also lead itself back to the Reaping Warmaker mod that allows us to create elemental worlds the moment we use our class ability, and with the added on benefits of Powerful Well, we will get two worlds for the price of one. With mobility out of the way, we then have Discipline which is at 50, and although this is much lower than what would be recommended, grenades don't need a lot of investment if the focus of the build isn't grenade based only. Here we will be using the Echo of Underminer Fragment for the debuff ability the grenade will grant us, and this will be a flat 15%. With that, we will then use mods such as Elemental Armament for creating world via our weapons, and then Balfour Wells for getting us two worlds instead of one. We also have overload grenades for stopping overload champs and the distribution mod for getting energy back for all abilities. I would usually opt into using elemental ornaments for grenades, but this time around I thought I wouldn't use grenades so much, so I opted into using the armors mod instead, which kind of makes more sense. The elemental armors mod will be finicky at activating at times, but we do have Reaping Warmaker active, which will act as a buffer if we don't get things to work out well. And then lastly, we do have the Ashes to Ashes mod available, so we can get our super energy back in time. This will help out the intellect stat, which is at an averagely good level. This should be everything you need for making the build how it is, and how very simple it is for everyone to use. You can add in mods such as Font of Might, Font of Wisdom, or Elemental Light, etc. if you wish, as there's literally no downside in terms of which mod you like to add in. Now, left over wise, we have the Harmonic Cypher mod for allowing us to create orbs of power via magic elemental weapons, Volatile Flow for allowing us to make our weapons become volatile, Invigoration for mini cooldown, and Trace Rifle Scavenger for increased trace preserves. Now, with everything covered, here's what it looks like compiled into one. For Head, we have Discipline, Harmonic Siphon, Ashes to Acids, and Powerful World mod. Arm, we have Recovery, Fastball, and Elemental Arms mod. Chest with Mobility, because of Dampener, Thermal Shot Plating, and Volatile Flow mod. Leg with Minor Ordnance, Trace Rifle Scavenger, Invigoration, and Powerful Friends mod. Cloak with Minor Recovery, Distribution, Overload Grenades, and Reap and Wellmaker mod. And with that all covered, you now get a build that's capable of clearing out rooms or combatants within one shiny orb and a ton of explosions nearby. I can say without a doubt that Void 3.0 has been quite a blessing for any Void based weapon or gear as it provides a ton of benefits and uses for all types of players in mind. Instead of being limited to just one ability at a time, we can now create a build that incorporates Void Explosions, or one that allows us to use Devour, or one that allows us to use debuffs as we please, etc. This build is an example of that and shows how well and how far the subclass rebound has come. We are able to get a constant healing field that will damage anyone within the area of effect over time while also making them volatile and fight for destruction. Upon death, you can also go invisible and use this to move around safely and repeat the same chaos again and again, and it honestly makes me fall in love with the Runa's effigy all over again. Loading up Psyops missions or Legend Nightfall has given me some interesting runs with taking out large Runa combatants in one go. I even tried this out in a raid for the first encounter, and that went really well, to the point that I could also solo the combatants incoming by myself when my team took on the main task at peace. However, I never tried to build out in mass level content because of the risk of dealing with much turret combatants. If I get my weapon volatile, then I stand a good chance against them, but if not, then that's where the issue starts to occur. The good thing though is that while using the blocking ability, it will briefly stun anyone caught within it, and the heavy attacks is more than enough to do some noticeable damage. You also need to make sure you add on the protected mods for extra safety like normal, but except from that, I can see the build working out well in master endgame content as long as you're prepared. Overall, this is part of those very strong style of builds for those who want to clear ads with safety in mind. Anyone can use this and does not require any sort of knowledge beforehand to achieve this. You just need to make sure you have a well on standby and you're good from there. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you on the next one.